A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I do not come with sublimity of words of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet, we do speak of wisdom to those who are mature, but not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages of our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. But it is written, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him. This God has revealed to us through the Spirit. The word of the Lord. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Trust in the Lord and do good that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's request. Uh, the mouth of justice, the Lord. Commit to the Lord your way and trust in him, and he will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light, bright as the new day shall be a vindication. The mouth of the just tells of wisdom, and his tongue utters what is right. The law of his God is in, in his heart, and his steps do not falter. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Alleluia! Alleluia! Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? 
He said in reply, Elijah will indeed come and restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come. And they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So also will the Son of Man suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now I feel a little in intimidated this morning on this Carmelite feast, preaching to four Carmelite sisters who know much more about John the Cross than I know. But I did learn something of him when I was a Dominican priest. And uh, I'll just share uh, everything I know, which is little, so you won't be here long. Okay. Uh, like in the gospel today, that the deacon proclaimed Ezekiel was treated a certain way, uh, John the Baptist, and Jesus. They all suffered rejection. They were ignored. They weren't recognized as they ought to be. And it was the same for John of the Cross. He came... Uh, into the Carmelite order, and as I, if I remember correctly, uh, the thought I'm, I'm going to, I, it's not, it's not disciplined enough for me. I want to become a Carthusian, and he was all set to become a Carthusian. And then Saint Teresa came along and said to him, "No, no, I need your help." And so he stayed and helped her reform uh, what I thought as a Dominican was already a hard way of living to make it, and not, it's not to make it harder but to make it uh, more opportunistic to seek communion with the living and loving and merciful God. And so uh, St. Teresa and John of the Cross uh, started the Reformation of the Carmelite order. But as you can appreciate, uh, Carmelites, like all religious uh, orders, are made up of human beings. And we never cease being human. And some of us master the art of dying to self for the sake of the Lord and others, and some resist it. And so it's those who just couldn't uh, uh, accept the reform and the discipline that was, uh, and the renewal of the discipline required, uh, gave, to say the least, John the Cross a very hard time. Uh, uh, mistreated him, rejected him, imprisoned him, and. Uh, I'm sure they must have been surprised when they were, uh, their day came and they, because of God's mercy, enjoyed heavenly peace. And along comes John of the Cross, also not, is a saint and doctor of the church, enjoying heavenly peace. And there must have been a surprise on their behalf. Oh my God. Like Jesus, these Carmelites who rejected John of the Cross, must have said to themselves, the stone rejected by the builder has become the cornerstone. Uh -huh.